right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Welcome everyone to the session on activism. I'm Sandy Rodriguez. I'm your session chair. I was going to read a quote from Pedagogy of the Oppressed, but we are running late. So we're going to go right into the presentations. We have two um, presentations. Uh, the first one, we have three presenters. Uh, Kelly Besser is the UCLA Library Special Collection Archivist. In addition to UCLA, Besser has processed collections for the African American Firefighter Museum, the Mamie A. Clayton Library and Museum, and the Yos Yosemite National Park Service Archives, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and the Tom of Finland Foundation. In 2006, Besser co-founded the Miracle Bookmobile, a donation-driven community-based project that redistributes free literature in Los Angeles and Oakland. Besser holds an MLIS with an archival studies specialization from UCLA. And Yasmin Desim is the head of audiovisual preservation at the UCLA Library, where she serves as technical lead as the library continues to develop, to develop its program of preservation, digitization, and access of moving image and sound holdings. Previously, she managed archive deliverables for new feature film releases at Paramount Pictures. Since 2015, as part of the UCLA Library's International Digital Ephemera Documenting Global Voices program, she has partnered with heritage institutions in Cuba and South Africa to provide digitization and preservation training. And Shawnee Miller is the Metadata and Digital Processing Coordinator at the UCLA Ethnomusicology Archive. From 2016 to 2017, she worked as a project coordinator for the Haynes Foundation funded Golden State Mutual Audiovisual Digitization and Access Project, an initiative of UCLA Library Audiovisual Preservation. As project coordinator, her responsibilities included the selection of materials for digitization, metadata creation, and outreach. And they will be presenting Freedom is a Constant Struggle, the Golden State Mutual Sound Recordings. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you're here to hear about insurance policy, you're in the right room. Uh, to get things started, we thought we'd uh, just show a little trailer uh, that shows some of the digitized materials that have come out of this preservation project to get warm up everybody and wake us up for the last session. Your company was formed because Negroes what? were unable Sorry. to get insurance from the other companies? Is that correct? Well, they were unable to get uh, first-class insurance protection at the time that uh, our company was organized back in 1925. And they were also unable to get the other benefits created by the uh, insurance premiums paid into life companies. Is that still true, or can a Negro now buy from any insurance company? Uh, that, uh, condition has changed tremendously.
Take nothing less than the suffering best. Do not obey, no must be for sake, but you can pass the test. Just move on. switch over really quick. Okay. Great. Okay, cool. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you for making that beautiful trailer, Shawnee. Um, my name is Kelly Besser, and I'm the Library Special Collections Archivist at UCLA Library Special Collections. Uh, Golden State Mutual equals life. I'm going to talk a little bit about the processing of this collection, the acquisition of the collection, and how it's used by researchers. So it came to us in two parts, the first in 1986 and the second part in 2010. The collection spans from 1909 to 2009. And uh, when my boss told me I would be processing a collection of life insurance records, a company uh, that just dealt with insurance coverage in California, specifically Los Angeles, I had no idea it would be this amazing. This has been, it's one of our cornerstone, cornerstone collections at UCLA. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the company history. It was founded in 1925 in July by these three gentlemen. The founder on the left came from Texas. His name's William Nickerson Jr. The man in the middle is George Beavers, a clergyman. And the man on the right is an insurance agent from Northern California named Norman O. Houston. And they came together in 1925 to create Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company in Los Angeles. And the reason why is because Black Angelinos, there were 40,000 black Angelinos at the time living in Los Angeles that had no access to life insurance. Um, they also sought to create jobs that paid a living wage too, and they did both of those. And the company existed for about 90 years. This is the site of the first home office on Central Avenue. They leased that top story. Uh, it was a, like, a very, very small closet-sized room. And they quickly grew out of that and moved to two other locations down Central Avenue. And this I just wanted to show for the fashion. These are the founders. That's um, them at the beach uh, in Santa Monica on a weekend. This is their weekend casual gear. That's George Beavers on the left, the founder Nickerson in the middle, and on the right, Norman O. Houston. And this beach was a segregated beach, and they referred to it as the ink spot. And that little guy in the right-hand corner crawling toward us, that will be the, uh, the, the son of Norman O. Houston, who went on to become the CEO and the chairman, the, the board, the chief executive officer of Golden State Mutual, and who donated the collection to UCLA in 86. Uh, and this is Ivan J. Houston in the 60s and then in the 80s. He donated the first 52 boxes to UCLA Library Special Collections in 1986. And this is their final office on Western and Adams in the, the historic West Adams district. This is where we packed up the second accession when the company went into receivership. Um, in 2009, the insurance commissioner of the state of California then gifted the remaining records, which turned out to be 125 linear feet of the oldest records of the company history. And we had three days to pack these records up because as you can see from this image, some of, we, there was a water main break 
and some of the records were damaged, and we needed to get them to UCLA Preservation as soon as possible, and we needed to do appraisal very quickly in three days. Um, when I started processing the collection in 2014, I had six months to do so under uh, the Haynes Foundation grant, and there was no, what we did when we got it in 86 is we just published an inventory to the Online Archive of California so that researchers could begin to access the collection, but there was no arrangement, no description of the records, really. So what I did was I pulled both accessions together, I imposed an arrangement, and then I chose to do as much description as I could. I focused on women more this time. Um, because they were kind of, it, they weren't that visible in the historical record. And these are two women that rose to become the first and second members of the board of directors. On the left is Helen Batiste, who is George Beavers' sister, who was the first woman um, to work for the company in 1925. She was the first office girl. She rose to become, she rose up the ranks. She basically took every position in the company until she became um, the first woman on the board of directors. And on to her right is Verna Hickman, who is the daughter of Nickerson, the founder of the company, his sister Rosetta, and she was hired in 1926 and rose to become the second woman on the board of directors and also headed up an award-winning public relations department for GSM. And this is an example, this is the Black Vignette series, and this is an example of Hickman's work as public relations director. Um, these are basically essentially black history cards which were used in, in schools, they were used by community organizations to educate, and they were also used by the agents when they were out in the field going to door to door selling insurance and talking about black history. Um, the, co the company, the records have been used by researchers for everything from black history, economics, civil rights, um, in other areas, like the study of the Watts community, this is Mayor Bradley um, driving in the Watts Summer Festival Parade. Um, it's also been used to study Black History Month. Uh, Vassy D. Wright and her Our Authors Study Club, some people, some researchers are interested in tracing that into Los Angeles as the foundation of Black History Month. And finally, in box 41 are the Biddy Mason papers. and. It's records of, of Mason's life in Los Angeles where she emancipated herself um, in a Los Angeles courtroom and she also founded the first AME church. And this box is paged so much that the box is, you can feel that it's, it's sort of dilapidated and you can tell that it's been well loved by our researchers. So when we reprocessed the collection we were kind of hoping that her, her uh, papers would land in a different box but they came right back into 41. So this is a very special box and everyone at Library Special Collections knows that uh, Miss Biddy Mason resides in box 41 and is, uh, is our most researched part of the collection. Thank you. We are sticking to time. We're gonna make sure our trains run on time. One moment. So I'm going to talk today about the amateur recordings that are in the collection. Uh, the majority of the collection is still images, and, and then the, re the rest of it is actually a lot of moving image material, and there's also sound uh, to a lesser degree. Moving images across video and small gauge film. The audio is across quarter inch audio, audio cassettes, autograph discs, and lacquer discs. Uh, being in sh uh, Amateur recordings, there was a lot of common issues that we came across, like noise, crosstalk, and audio overwrite. Uh, but what's wonderful about them is that they give us a little peek into Golden State Mutual, because we have so many still images and silent home movies that we, of course, couldn't hear anyone otherwise. And these recordings covered speeches, meetings, special events like anniversaries and dedication ceremonies, some oral histories, and even an audio memo outlining in painstaking detail the logistics for ordering a, a ring for the executives. And so here are some of the stills from our moving image in the collection. These recordings are wonderful because they give us a really a fuller context to what many of the photographs, and I said, and still silent uh, home movies show us. They share evidence of their business strategies, uh, efforts at professionalization, and new ground that they were hoping to break. And they highlight important figures, not just the executives, but also their families and supporters, as well as field agents and employees. Most significantly, these recordings demonstrate how the GSM staff and executives consistently saw the work they were doing in the larger context of history, how closely this work was tied to the community service and the struggle for economic equity and social justice. I'm going to play a few audio examples to demonstrate this, and we're going to start with an autograph disc recording of Lillian Harris. 
Uh, she's being, is this from May 6, 1949, and it's, uh, she was being interviewed by GSM librarian Mamie Spencer, who introduces her briefly. Mrs. Harris then goes on to talk about briefly her uh, great pride in being connected to GSM. She's the mother of Norman O. Houston, president of Golden State Mutual. Mrs. Harris is 75 years young, very charming, and very beautiful today in a blue printed frock, a soft blue, which enhances the beauty of her olive brown complexion and silver hair. This is Mamie Spencer speaking, librarian of Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company. The next voice you hear will be that of Mrs. Lillian Harris. Now, oh yeah. As mother of Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company, I am proud of every member of my large family. Although I have reached the age when I am no longer active in community projects, the realization is greater each day that an understanding honor was bestowed upon me the day William J. Nicholson, Jr., at the suggestion of George A. Beavis, said, Lillian Harris, you are the mother of Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company. So there's other autograph recordings like this in the collection that also include interviews with Bertha Nickerson, who is William Nickerson's wife, and Luther Hudson, who served on the board of directors and has the distinction of being the first African-American mortician. And also Titus Alexander, uh, there was a historian whose uh, his recording is also captured this way. Uh, our next example is from the 25th anniversary celebration at the home office. Uh, anniversaries uh, were held every year, celebrations every year around July, which uh, uh, commemorated the founding of the company back in 1925 and they were very richly documented throughout the collection. This one that I'm going to play for you is from 1950, and we can hear in this clip Edgar J. Johnson kicking off the event with a speech that highlights the work that they were doing. He, at this point, he was corporate secretary. He had started in the company as one of the first field agents and eventually would move on to, in the ranks to become um, chief administrative officer. Our company is yet a small corporation. But during the 25 years of its existence, I believe it has made its place in this great city of angels and within this, the finest state in the United States. We have taken our place in the ranks of commerce and industry that is making for Los Angeles and California known and respected throughout the nation and throughout the world. We are forging toward the same objectives of building a better community, a more secure citizenry, and happier populace. That is the goal of all worthwhile public service institutions. So you see there that he's referring to Golden State Mutual as a public service institution, so definitely is more as than an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial adventure. Um, adventure. Um, the next example is going to be from uh, a groundbreaking ceremony on LA's uh, East Side office. That's from July 1974. And Ivan J. Houston will be speaking in this clip, uh, speaking about the, the importance of the East Side District to the success of Golden State Mutual and how important successful black businesses were to the community, yet how rare. Since this is Father's Day, I would certainly like to say Happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> and to all the other fathers, Happy Father's Day. I think you can see, based upon the remarks that have already been made, how important the Los Angeles East Side District is to the company. Because really, it's been the first district. It's actually the well from which the other agencies of the company now, not only here on the West Coast, but all the way to the East Coast, have sprung. I think that it is very appropriate to begin construction here with a ceremony. We blacks 
need successes. It is true. We have had great athletes. We have had great entertainers. We have had outstanding politicians. We have had great educators and great religious personalities. But successful businesses owned and controlled by blacks are rare indeed. I say that as long as we are denied equal access, not only to employment, but to the very tops of organizations, tops of the Fortune 500 organizations, that we must be certain that our own businesses grow and grow and grow. We are dedicated to that growth here today. Thank you very much. Up next, I'm going to play a clip from a, a in the National Insurance Association meeting in July uh, 26, 1962, where Robert F. Kennedy was addressing the group, uh, association. During his speech, he spoke about progress being made under the Kennedy administration in the area of black uh, voter rights and civil rights and black professional employment opportunities. And he ended his speech with a call to the attendees to give back to the community uh, by providing guidance and support to students and helping graduates find jobs. This approach was very closely already modeled by Golden State Mutual and their service, their idea of uh, giving back to the community via service, job training, and also later on the development of the Golden State Minority Foundation, which was a scholarship foundation of sorts that uh, supported the education of low income and underrepresented students. Uh, in this clip, George A. Beavers takes the podium after RFK and responds, thanking him for his message, acknowledging the challenges that they are taking on, and speaking about the greater implications for the country. We say thank you for this thoughtful message, for the challenges that it brings to us, and we assure you that we accept those challenges. We have discussed some of the same problems in our sessions here, and we are heartened by the fact that you recognize that as you help to move this block of racial discrimination and racial segregation from our country, you're not only helping Negro Americans, you're helping white Americans. <laughs> you recognize that our country cannot occupy its place of leadership and be effective until these blocks have been removed and that is very heartening to us and we appreciate your recognition of that fact and your expressions. We hope that uh, progress will be so accelerated in this field that the day will not be too far away when all of the states will join the union and abide by the Constitution and Bill of Rights. <laughs> and lastly, I'm going to play a clip from a, a dedication ceremony for the Hall of Honor. The Hall of Honor uh, is, actually occupies the home office ground floor where the historic murals were painted uh, that are still actually there and uh, showing the contributions of African Americans to the history of California. Uh, during this ceremony, um, George Beavers again, we have him speaking, uh, speaking about Golden State Mutual's place in, the, in history. History is a continuous operation. New history is being made, new records made every day. And every year there's a new chapter in GSM history. And this Hall of Honor is an appropriate link between what has gone before and what is going now and what it will be in the future. So again, I congratulate the first 
persons who have the distinction of going into this place hall of honor and paving the way for those who are to follow. So in this Hall of Honor, the goal was to actually uh, highlight the contributions of field personnel, the agents that went out and met with everyone to get their insurance policies in place and uh, highlight their work. So it was very much, again, in, in very valuable to them to sort of draw attention to all the people that helped to, uh, grow the company and, and help with their successes. So that's the last clip for me. And up next is going to be Shawnee Miller, and she's going to look at the corporate recordings and the collections and the radio spots. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so for this presentation, I'm going to focus on the corporate and commercial sound recordings in the GSM records. Uh, I've decided to title my presentation In the Groove and for the Record. Um, note that there is mag magnetic media um, in this group of clips, but for lack of a better pun, I'm sticking with um, In the Groove and for the Record. <laughs> so here we go. Um, so these recordings created, are created by the company include commercial advertisements, sponsored productions, and narrative programs created for radio. Our story begins here, in the Los Angeles home office where the public relations department was based. Um, everything from sales, advertising, and community relations fell um, under the purview of the public relations department. And by the time the company closed its doors in 2009, GSM had ex expanded to Oregon, Arizona, Washington, Michigan, and Indiana. And commercial radio advertising allowed the company to broadcast its services regionally, and connected its various district offices. So the first clip I'm going to play is from a 1967 commercial for KDI News out of Bay Area. And this program is one of the sponsored items, um, one of the media items sponsored by GSM. And here we go. When you decide to buy insurance, you want to deal with a company you can trust, financially and as an individual. A company like Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Company, founded in 1925 and now the largest Negro-owned and operated institution in the West. Golden State Mutual field representatives, known as the men with the golden pins, serve as life insurance counselors and as committed members to their communities. They represent Golden State Mutual as spearheads in the Negro drive for economic security. Golden State Mutual works on the belief that confidence is a two-way street. That as your confidence provides the foundation for Golden State Mutual's growth, so does the Golden State Mutual Company in your community help people live better lives. Why don't you find out about Golden State Services? Call or visit the man with the golden pen. Now, Berna Hickman, which for many years served as head of the Public Relations Department, and just to identify her here, she's the woman sitting in the crowd um, surrounded by the men. Um, so with the exception of the previous clip, all the recordings that are going to be featured from this point forward um, were created during her tenure. Um, within the first 15 years of Golden State Mutual's founding, the company was already using radio to advertise its various services and communicate to uh, potential customers. And meanwhile, external productions were also being produced um, outside of GSM, which interpreted the company's history for a larger audience. One such production is Destination Freedom, and we're going to be listening to a clip from Mr. Jericho Adjust the Claim, which was produced by Richard Durham for the Chicago NBC affiliate WMAQ. And this is a narrative production that reinterprets the story of GSM, GSM's founding through the Mr. Jericho character. Um, and he's an insurance agent for the Judgment Day Insurance Company. <laughs> And in a nutshell, Mr. Durham makes an assessment of Nickerson's lifespan. If he continues on his current path, how long will he have <laughs> um, left to live? And his current path um, includes advocating for fair employment practices, um, lobbying for equal rights, and fair businesses. And most notably, um, the real William J. Nickerson, William Nickerson Jr., excuse me, died in 1945 
And according to Mr. Jericho, if he suspends these sort of activities, he can extend his lifespan by 10 years. <laughs> And that's um, Richard Durham on the left and William Nickerson Jr. on the right. And right now we'll play an audio clip which details the founding of GSM. Houston, Beavers, look, I have found a way here. Here's a statute that's called an assessment law. This law provides for a $15,000 guarantee fund and 500 applicants for insurance to start a company. You see? Now. We've got to get started on raising that money. We'll put everything we've got in it, and for the rest, we'll go out and dig for it. We've got to go faster, man, faster. Our competitors know we're working to set up a company. They've helped pass a law that triples the requirement. If we don't have our chart in two weeks, we're through. May 1945, your application for a charter for a new insurance company, Golden State Mutual, has been accepted. You may proceed with the establishment of your company. Um, before I go on, I just wanted to mention that the holdings of the um, Destination Freedom, if you're interested in looking at the scripts, those are at the Chicago History Museum, and the Schomburg Center at the NYPL has um, the entire run of recordings. Um, so I'll just play a brief clip of um, from another clip from Destination Freedom. As you see, I've checked through your life policy, and I see why Judgment Day Life Insurance Company expected you to uh, collect your benefits before your time was up. You're still going around California demanding a fair employment practices law? Yes. You see, my policy hasn't changed since I found I couldn't get my first job because I had no insurance against discrimination and race prejudice. I provided people with one kind of insurance, but I want to see that all people are insured against bigotry and prejudice. Fair employment's the best insurance I know of for that. I'm going to make that speech tonight. Each word I speak that advances the cause of human equality is like reducing the premiums people have to pay to live. Peace and equality for all peoples still the policy I'd like to sell. Yes. Good night, yes. Mr. Jericho. I'll leave you to adjust that policy. Good night, William Nickerson. Yes, Chief. He just went downstairs and out into the rain. His policy? It was all quite in order. Premiums paid in full. The benefits are long overdue. Yes, Chief, I'll sign it. Adjust to Jericho, Judgment Day Life Insurance Company, April 1945. He was one of Judgment Day's best clients, Chief. Another example of the corporate recordings in the collection is something called Gold State Life Insurance Broadcast, um, which was um, a radio program, I would say, um, that Golden State Mutual sponsored. Um, the narrator is George A. Beavers, who was one of the company executives. And it's notable because it features um, some Negro, excuse me, African-American choirs, using the parlance at the time, <laughs> um, such as Hall Johnson, of the Hall Johnson Singers, Hall Johnson Choir as well as Jester Harrison, who is the assistant um, conductor of the Hall Johnson Choir. And Harrison was a noted actor, choral director, and ethnomusicologist. Um, if you're interested in learning more about uh, Jester Harrison, the, the UCLA Ethnomusicology has a, a great interview with him on archive.org and also accessible on Calisphere. So with that, I'll just play a brief clip. Life without some humorous experiences would be painfully monotonous. Mr. Jester Harrison, assistant conductor of Hall Johnson Choir, will now render for your entertainment and a last provoking story of the search for prosperity. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Initiative, we're, initiatives, we're working with the Golden State Mutual Alumni Association, which was a group that was founded after the company's closure in 2009 um, by former staffers, and they meet monthly. So what we've been doing is working with them to help with identifications of the various individuals in these photographs, pardon me, <laughs> because as you can see, as one would expect, in 85 years of service, several different employees came through the company, and what we really would like to do is um, see that as many people as we as can be identified are identified and more context is given to the media as well as the photographs and we're also looking into hosting a community screening with that um, thank you um, these are our emails if you have any questions and the collection is online on calisphere which now has over 2400 items with more to come over the next few months thank you <laughs> 